Hi, my name's Mrs. Wilden. I'm the Head of Classics and Latin at the County High. Um, and I just wanted uh, to share some important information with you for those of you who are considering doing Latin in Year 8 with us. Um, just to start us off, I wanted to set you a little bit of a challenge. I've put together three pictures here and I wanted to see if anyone knows what these all have in common. Um, and if you think you've got the answer to that, if you can do the follow-up question, why do you think Starbucks chose this as their logo? I'm just going to give you a couple of um, seconds to think about the answers there. So, as some of you may uh, have realised, the link between the three pictures is the word siren, okay? Um, the famous story of uh, Odysseus's ship on the right-hand side uh, on that uh, Greek vase, uh, sailing past the sirens, who are these um, wim uh, women with uh, female heads, uh, but then they had the bodies of birds, and they basically lured men, uh, sailors in their boats, to their death with their very enchanting songs. Okay, so monsters to be avoided at all costs, uh, really. So why on earth would Starbucks pick that as their logo? And I think um, probably the message I were trying to get is that, you know, we sell coffee that's really amazing or other drinks which are really amazing and they're sort of luring you into their shops with their tasty goodies um, and that this is something, you know, everyone should want to indulge in, okay? Um, perhaps slightly odd, but uh, often you'll see that in the modern world, references to the classical world come up all the time um, and... Um, often, you know, the companies or uh, people who are making decisions want to make some sort of clever play with their knowledge of uh, the classical world. Right. Now, um, the following slide is just to make you um, think about a question which is often raised, that no one actually speaks Latin anymore, so what is the point of studying it? Uh, so I want to talk to you about why Latin is still considered a really, really valuable um, language and subject to study um, by lots of universities and employers. Um, so Latin is really a unique uh, subject. It develops so many different skills uh, because we study a huge a variety of things within Latin, the whole culture really. There's the history, the language, we study its literature and uh, and its culture. Um, now within that, we there are specific skills that we, we really develop and hone, such as problem solving, analysis, close attention to detail, uh, thinking logically and thinking laterally. Um, and this is a, you know, something that not all schools offer, so it's a real chance for you to stand out as a student um, and show that you're very much up for an academic challenge. Um, Latin is certainly a subject that's going to stretch you um, and you're going to learn lots and lots of different things as well as skills. Um, and one thing which often um, students develop um, is a very sophisticated level of vocabulary. So to sort of build on that, if you um, know sort of the derivations of English words, um, this will come as no surprise that 12,000 of them are from Latin. So if you, um, you know, have a good knowledge of Latin vocabulary, it's going to help you in in, you know, develop your own English vocabulary as well. 6,000 are from French and 2,000 are from ancient Greek. So Latin really has influenced our language um, very widely. Now this is often a question I get asked about how it fits in with other languages. So, you know, if you study French or Spanish, Italian, um, all of these are derived from Latin. And Latin actually really complements um, the study of MFL brilliantly. It goes hand in hand. I actually studied myself classics and French at university. Um, so I think it's a really good language to study alongside 
um, a modern language. Um, you can absolutely at switches study both Latin and a modern foreign language at GCSE. Um, equally, there are students who choose to just study Latin um, by itself, and that's also absolutely fine, and those students do very, very well as well. Um, something which I would say is that um, the impact on English literacy is really, really noticeable. Both students and English teachers uh, very quickly see the impact that Latin, studying Latin has on students' level of English. So that's another um, advantage. It doesn't just benefit those studying another for modern foreign language, but also everyone studying English. Now another really important reason I think to study Latin is that some of the greatest literature um, was written by the Romans and this is literature that has gone on to influence countless playwrights like Shakespeare, poets, um, but also artists uh, throughout history ever since. All right, um, and I'm just going to run through a couple of these images here. So we've got on the left hand side, the escape of Aeneas um, and his family from the burning city of Troy. Um, obviously the story of the Trojan horse is a very famous story, um, but at um, GCC or A level, it's very likely that you'd be reading part of this great epic about um, the fall of Troy and how the Trojans go on to um, found Rome, essentially, go on to become, um, that, that, that the Trojan descendants become the Romans. Uh, so it's a great national epic written by Virgil. Another um, author that we study a lot uh, is Ovid, so that's the middle image, and he writes a really amazing piece of work called The Metamorphoses, which is all about um, the changes that happen in, in, in actually in Greek myth. So although Ovid is writing in Latin and he's a Roman, he uses Greek stories um, and writes lots of really wonderful, fantastical stories, um, sometimes quite entertaining stories about people changing into trees or um, animals and lots of strange things happening. Um, and another author that you might study is Tacitus. Um, so on the right hand side there we have a scene um, from I. Claudius, he's one of the emperors. Um, and Tacitus is a historian, a Roman historian, who writes a lot about the different Roman emperors and their rather sometimes dubious actions or, um, well, the sort of scandals that they can get into. And this picture here is um, from a story Tacitus relates about the Emperor Caligula who apparently, uh, he's rather crazy, um, he's so crazy that he decides to make a horse um, part of the Senate. Okay, so that's the government, like, like the government, the, um, the ruling body, um, which obviously is a rather strange thing for somebody to do. Okay. Um, now, I read this a little while ago, and I remember hearing Charlotte Higgins um, speak and say that actually accessing literature uh, in, in Latin, this, this is tough, it's, it's a challenge, but it also offers uh, entry into an astonishing world, a lost world that paradoxically offers itself up vividly and excitingly through its literature. Um, that basically if you if you are able to read something in its original language um, it's it, it's such an amazing experience and um, it's it's something that's really exciting um, yes it's challenging but it's it, it's just a really fun thing to be able to do okay so that's about the literature now um, at Switches we work really really hard to try and bring Latin alive um, for many years now we've run an international trip to uh, Pompeii at Key Stage 4 and in sick form for those studying uh, Latin or Class Civ, uh, a trip to Rome. Um, we've invited in lots of academics to give talks or workshops to students, um, as well as taking trips locally, uh, for example to London, um, so that students have um, are able to broaden their knowledge of, of uh, the Romans and Latin. Now, I've put together a series of famous people here and I just wanted to see if anyone knows 
what might connect all these different people. There's obviously quite a range here. We've got someone like J.K. Rowling, you know, obviously a writer, a Coldplay music musician. We've got an actor, Tom Hiddleston, a footballer. Um, and my point here is, um, of course, what links them all is that they all studied Latin. Most of them actually at university, they studied classics. Um, and what I wanted to show you here is that, that Latin can lead to a huge variety of careers. It's valued by lots and lots of different um, employers and also at, you know, at university level for lots of different subjects. Um, and you know, careers might, you know, if you study Latin a career um, that might think it particularly valuable, it might be something like law or finance, um, journalism, science, lots of scientific words or medical terms come from Latin, um, as well as like accountancy or academia. Um, it really is a, a subject that the skills are transferable to so many different jobs and academic pursuits. Um, and this is very much reflect reflected in a couple of these quotes from different newspapers. And I think it really captures that what's special about studying something like classics and Latin is that you are um, honing a wide set of skills. Now, in So at Switches, Latin is begun in year eight. Students need to commit to one lesson a week, which is after school, either in the autumn or the spring term. And then if they're enjoying Latin and wish to continue it to GCSE, they then need to recommit and do a one, one lesson a week after school in the summer term. We follow the Cambridge Latin course, which is very popular and well loved. Um, the family of um, Caecilius is at the centre of the story. He's in the picture there and um, he lives in the very famous city of Pompeii, which of course is um, destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. There is weekly homework, which is mainly vocab learning. Uh, sometimes we set a written task instead, um, and the homework is very well supported by online resources on the Cambridge Latin course website. This course, the Year 8 course, is a foundation for GCSE. We have high expectations, and students do need to complete all the work um, and homework set to the best of their ability. Our results are something to really celebrate. Um, students worked incredibly hard last year and I'll let you read the following results at, at GCSE. Now I wanted just to talk about um, if you miss a lesson because this is really, really important. Um, if you know you're going to be absent from a lesson, uh, a parent or carer must email me before the lesson. There's actually a safeguarding issue, so if you are not going to be there, if there's a fire, I need to know that you weren't meant to be here, you haven't just gone missing, um, or obviously if something's, something else has happened. So, you know, if for example you have to have a dentist appointment in your Latin lesson after school, um, I, you know, I understand sometimes that has to happen, um, but I need to be informed before the lesson takes place. Um, and obviously, if you can, please don't arrange something, uh, you know, an orthodontist appointment in, in the Latin lesson, if at all possible. Um, if you are going to miss a lesson, you need to attend the other lesson. So if you normally come on Thursday, you need to come the same week on the Friday so that you don't fall behind. Um, we only have one lesson a week uh, and if you miss that lesson it's a lot of input that you are then um, are then missing okay and if you can just pop that also in the email to say which that you're going to attend the other lesson that'd be great I'm just gonna let you read what a few of our current year 11s have said about um, studying Latin Here's another one. Okay. 
So the final thing just to say is I hope lots of you will be interested in taking up this challenge. Latin, as I said, is an exciting opportunity to study something that's a bit different, is academically challenging and highly regarded. Uh, we do expect students to take the commitment seriously and commit properly to the course and obviously meet all the expectations I've outlined. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. My email's there and I hope to see lots of you either this term or next term um, to study Latin. All the best.